Hello friends, a very good morning to all of you. Some of you may not know, but the Prime Minister has addressed a very high level meeting to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. So this uh, 75th anniversary of United Nations makes it very important for our UPSC examination. This entire topic a little bit of its background and what are its achievements and failures we have to discuss this in a nutshell so let's start by going back to the predecessor of United Nations that was the League of Nations why it why it was established why it failed and what led to the development of United Nations so I'm assuming that you may have uh, you may be having a little bit of knowledge about the world history so you must be knowing that after the first world war uh, League of Nations was established in the year 1920 uh, after the Treaty of Versailles was signed and uh, the Allied powers that is the United States Britain France and the Soviet Union all these powers they joined hands to establish the League of Nations you may be wondering or you may be not be knowing this that even though President Woodrow Wilson issued uh, 11 points for for world peace and all and he pushed for the establishment of League of Nations but it is surprising that the United Nation, United States of America itself did not join the League of Nations. Similarly, uh, Germany joined it in only in 1926 that to uh, for a brief period of seven years because when uh, because in 1933 when Hitler came to power he pulled out Germany from the League of Nations. Similarly, the Soviet Union was there for a very brief period until uh, 1939 when he when it attacked when it allegedly attacked Finland in 1939. So it was expelled from the League of Nations. League of Nations was already dominated by the victorious allied powers that is the France and uh, uh, Great Britain so there was power is asymmetry in the League of Nations already so cooperation at such a multilateral institution was next to impossible with dominant powers dominating the entire organization and especially with the absence of United States so it was destined to doom it failed in uh, to control the primary objective of itself that was to not let any further world war happen but the second world war happened so the idea of league of nations was questionable and it had to be dismantled the replacement of it was united nations now as we are discussing about United Nations and its 75th anniversary so let's start why it was established uh, how it was established and all the important things that we may have to learn for the UPSC examination okay so the goal of United Nations was to maintain world peace and save future generations from the evils of war so now you can see that, that, that this goal is similar to that of League of Nations. However, the League of Nations failed to uphold this goal or achieve this goal. United Nations is, uh, has so far been able to control and maintain this uh, objective of uh, its foundation. Okay, so let's see the birth of United Nations. The, uh, it is... Uh, uh, we are giving a little bit of background of the li the League of Nations that it was created in June 1919. It was headquartered in Geneva and not in New York. Okay, because the United Nations is headquartered in New York, US. 
but uh, League of Nations was headquartered in Geneva, Switzerland. Okay, and uh, what made, what was the idea that brought forward the United Nations? The American President Franklin D. Roosevelt and British Prime Minister Winston Churchill held a secret meeting in Canada regarding the possibility of creating an international uh, peace bo uh, body uh, which will uh, address the issues related to the war because uh, they are meeting in August 1941. During that time the Second World War is already ongoing and these uh, uh, two leaders are meeting to explore the possibility of ensuring peace. Okay, so they together together issued a statement which was later to be called as Atlantic Charter. It was uh, actually, it was not a treaty but only an affirmation that pre uh, paved the way for the creation of UN. Now, let me tell you an interesting fact. Uh, I have specially mentioned this name here, Cordell Hull. Now, who is, who is he? He was the Secretary of State of uh, American President Franklin Roosevelt. He is also known as the Father of United Nations because he made an immense amount of efforts to bring together a, a, lot, of, a lot of countries to finally come on board and establish United Nations. He uh, invested a lot of diplomatic capital convinced a lot of European and non-European countries uh, that United uh, regarding the ne necessity of creating a body like United Nations. So he was later to be awarded a, a Nobel Peace Prize and he was uh, called as the father of United Nations by none other than American President Franklin Roosevelt. Okay. So we've seen that the Atlantic Charter was issued by these two leaders after their meet meeting in Canada. The entire premise of this meeting was to ensure peace in the region uh, and in the world per se. So they, the de they declared that certain common principles in the national policies of their respective countries. Now, which which these which of these respective countries we are talking about here? The United States and UK, on which they base their hopes for a better future for the world. So it is generally talking about peace. Okay. So when did the signing of uh, the declaration for the United States happen? The United United States joined the war. Uh, um, I'm sorry, uh, United Nations. The United States joined the war in 1941, and for the first time, the term United Nations was coined by President Roosevelt. So you should know that the term United Nations was used by President Roosevelt uh, to identify the Allied powers against Axis powers. Axis powers. Who were the Axis powers? The Germany. Germany, uh, Italy, that this fish, fascist and uh, um, dictatorial powers, uh, including Japan, they were the Axis powers. Okay, uh, so they these Allied nations met in Washington D.C. Uh, for the Declaration of United Nations, which was basically the war objectives of allied power so you can see that that these uh, this united nations war had always had a tilt towards the allied powers and who were these allied powers united states of america soviet union united kingdom france these allied powers were basically moving around and creating a multilateral institution uh, that uh, would later to be that would later to be called as United Nations. The United Nations finally came into existence in on August, uh, October 24, 1945. Okay, so next month on October 24th, it will be the 75th anniversary of in United Nations. That's why we are discussing this topic here today. So it was ratified by 51 nations and uh, five permanent members. Who were these five permanent members? France, Soviet Union, UK and US and Republic of China. Why did I miss Republic of China? 
बिकॉज दिस रिपब्लिक ऑफ चाइना इज वेरी डिफरेंट फ्रॉम टूडेज कम्युनिस्ट चाइना दिस रिपब्लिक ऑफ चाइना वॉज नॉट रूल्ड बाई माउज डोंग एट दैट टाइम द कम्युनिस्ट वर नॉट देयर इट वॉज रूल्ड बाई सनयाद सैन एंड इट वॉज डेमोक्रेटिक बिकॉज दे आर यूजिंग द टर्म हेयर रिपब्लिक एज यू यू मे हैव रेड इट रेड अबाउट इट इन द वर्ल्ड हिस्ट्री द कॉम्युनिस्ट चाइना केम इन टू बींग ओनली इन द एयर नाइनटीन फोर्टी नाइन ओके सो वट वॉज द गोल वट वॉज द गोल ऑफ यूनाइटेड नेशंस as usual international peace and security developing friendly relations among nations achieving international cooperation in solving international problems and harmonizing the actions of nations in attainment of these common ends so basically it is all about how to maintain peace in the world and how all countries can make efforts collectively to ensure that the horrors of the world war are not repeated again or not just the world war but any regional war can uh, how we can avoid even a regional war okay so this was the entire objective of united nations so let's see if united nations has uh, succeeded in achieving these objectives Uh, at the time of its formation there were only 51 member states now you may be wondering why such a small number because many of the countries in africa and asia were colonized at that time so like in Indi like india was represented by britain so similarly many other european countries were representing the asian and african countries at that time when decolonization happened and these countries became independent they were being they were represented later by their respective governments today 193 countries countries are members of the united nations so united nations has achieved significant significant achievements in the last 75 years in uh, especially in the context of health environment women empowerment these are the uh, most important and uh, biggest achievements of united nations because these are the topics that we are that we discuss in our day to day lives these days so that's why the focus is on health environment women empowerment so what you uh, there's an interest there's an, uh, there is an another interesting fact that the first resolution that united nations general assembly adopted was to was a commitment to eliminate nuclear weapons by, uh, in 1946 this resolution was adopted in 1946 it was the first ever resolution and it called for the elimination of nuclear weapons because you know that united states attacked japan with nuclear bombs in hiroshima and nagasaki so that incident itself became a talk of the of that time and all the countries were scared about the possibility of exploration of nuclear weapons by the big powers so this uh, resolution was a commitment to eliminate nuclear weapons we may be we may have seen further developments on disarmament issues in the, the later period of uh 20th century uh in the forms of npt ctbt partial test ban treaty or even in uh, as late uh, latest as in 2017 regarding treaty on prohibition of nuclear weapons uh in 1948 world health organization was created it has been successfully it has successfully dealt with smallpox malaria and hiv at present you know that we are that at, uh, who is the is fighting corona virus pandemic in partnership with uh, its uh, the member states of united nations similarly in 1950 the united nations created high commissioner for refugees now these refugees were mostly those who were displaced during the second world war it is continuing to uh, even today this uh, office is continuing even today and we have seen 
its its active involvement uh, in the last uh, migrant crisis that uh, happened from uh, middle east to europe when many migrants were uh, fleeing the middle east countries to settle down in europe especially from greek and turkey okay so this was also a contribution from united nations in 1972 united nations environment program was created you may be reading about it for your prelims examination several several programs are running under the auspices of united nations environment program and similarly united nations also established a criminal court it uh, we know this criminal court uh, with the name international criminal court it is headquartered in <clears throat> hague the netherland uh, an interesting fact here is that india has not joined this icc uh, india has not acceded to the rome statute uh, which uh, gives the power uh, which was the foundational agreement for the establishment of icc india calls this uh, united nations criminal court as discriminatory and uh, calls and india does not allow any external jurisdiction on matters that are internal to india okay so um, why india did not join it because the united nations criminal court has the powers to um, try individuals also as against icj the international uh, court of justice they it only deals with uh, disputes related between two state parties for example if there is a dispute between india and pakistan the dispute will be dealt by icj but icc can on also uh, try uh, an individual let's say if uh, pakistan is a member of uh, icc and uh, icc wants to uh, initiate proceedings against a, a citizen of pakistan for uh, or a leader of pakistan let's say imran khan for war crimes or genocide or uh, any other atrocities it has the power and jurisdiction to do so for all the member states that have uh, acceded to the rome statute just to prevent our leadership just from vague and fictitious uh, cases india has not joined this uh, criminal court okay and so like any other organization it has also failed to achieve some big uh, in some big cases like for instance in rwandan genocide now during the rwandan genocide the the un mission the the person who was heading the un mission there uh, i think the name was romeo he had all the information about the arms and ammunition that the rebel groups were having uh, across the border uh, from rwanda in uganda but the united nations peacekeeping mission did not allow him to raid the those premises and later on that those same rebels carried out a genocide in rwanda during the civil war so the silence of united nations and inactivity of united nations led to the rwandan genocide in 1994 similarly there are uh, allegations of sexual misconduct in uh, several countries like in republic of congo and uh, cambodia and haiti and as recently as in 2011 united nations peacekeeping mission in south sudan was also unsuccessful uh, in eliminating the bloodshed caused by the civil war in 2013 so these are some failures and you can also add another failure b because that relates to india it is the united nations security council reforms india and g4 countries which are these g4 countries india germany brazil and japan these g4 countries are arguing 
and claiming for a democratic reform of United Nations Security Council and expansion of the United Nations Security Council to reflect the modern day realities but it has failed to transform itself and it is stuck in 1945 era so this is also a major criticism of United Nations that it is not up to date and it is not reflective of the modern day realities okay so you have you will have ample amount of uh, material to criticize United Nations at its 75th birthday okay so this was the topic for today we'll meet soon with another topic until then goodbye and thank you